Hey guys, welcome back to Hilux. This is part 9. We're getting in our spaceship here, or airship, because we're going in the air. We're not really going in space. It looks oddly uh, fish-like. It looks just kind of like a big whale flying in the sky. Whale, you know how it is. Um, boy, oh boy, today is August 8th, and it's not super hot. I'm just sweating because I'm trying to do some exercise today. A little bit of exercise. Uh, finally, getting getting some more, uh, some will upgrade because, like, I don't know where all the paper cups are in this game. The water coolers are a bit easier to find, but I did somehow find, like, a paper cup or two in the last episode, I think. I don't really even remember because it's sort of a it's just a burning memory, as the caretaker would say, which I have not listened to any of the caretaker's music. I think it might be too disturbing for me, but I don't know. I know he's really blown up because of the internet. So, uh, here's a, a sort of special, like, secret lab sort of doohickey sort of place. Of his mandible, my tyranny hoists. Tyranny? Tyranny. Do you say tyranny? Tyranny or tyranny because you say tyrant, but I think you say tyranny. So here's Claw Man. This must be like the foreman of the factory or something. I've been a foreman of a grand jury, but never the foreman of a factory before. I don't even know how uh, uh, factories work. Uh, I don't think it's possible to get the password, but uh, that's probably because, you know, this is a fight anyway. So we're gonna fight this dude. He's like a sea urchin, I mean a, a gastropod, I mean a, a, a spiny lobster, I mean, I don't know. I just went to an aquarium on Friday, so I, I was very excited about like the whole prospect of sea life and just remembering how much I love marine life. I don't know, if I wasn't a musician I'm or a gamer or whatever I am, I don't even know, but I would be a marine biologist. Maybe it's not too late for me. Maybe it's never too late. I don't know. It's just expensive. School is expensive. I mean, but then again, they have like online degrees and, and stuff. Um, ew. What does my horoscope say for today? You already have the power. Okay. And, I don't know. <laughs> I, I like it. I like sometimes these things are just very funny to try and like... Oh, oh, what does that mean? Oh, oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness, we're fighting a lobster. Um, and we have just, like, the same couple of guitar chords. Ooh, that's a cool... That's a cool animation. I've always liked how all the characters in this game wear the exact same, like, black leather gloves. I wonder if Mason Lindroth has, like, a thing for, like, black leather gloves. There's something just, like really sexy about wearing black leather gloves like I don't know can't wait for it to be like autumn and winter again so I can start wearing like cooler clothes not cooler clothes but you know like more interesting clothes although I don't having to, like having to go around wearing a heavy coat you know like an Eskimo or something don't say Eskimo that's racist because there are multiple tribes that or I don't know say like I don't know, indigenous Alaskan people, because that's less racist. Who works their art and who sniffs? I don't know. I don't want to know what you're sniffing. Ever since Copper Odyssey and uh, that one weirdo getting high off of the hard ground, which I don't even know what hard ground is. What is hard ground? Let's look it up. A hard ground is a lithified seafloor? No, that's... That's a hard ground in art. In one of the four major classes of printmaking techniques, distinguished from the other three methods, relief printing, stenciling, and... Any acid-resistant coating used to make an etching is called a ground. Most of them had wax as a basis, combined with various oils, blah blah blah. Anyway, 
that's for Copper Odyssey, but I know we're going to finish Copper Odyssey at some point. We're, we're close. But since there's no, since it's not a very popular game, there's no like walkthrough for it. Although I do have the creator's Instagram and I can just like message them about stuff. Oh yeah, so here's the place where you can get just massive amounts of money. You can get $75,000 just from fighting that claw boss and making it into the lab and pushing all these buttons. It's pretty nifty. I don't know if you need money for something. I mean, we, we do need money eventually because we need to buy the spaceship key. And <laughs> it's funny because originally I think I thought that was like near impossible to buy because I thought it was six nines. So like $999,999, but it's only five nines. So it's a, it's a tenth of that, which is much more affordable. Um, I didn't read his text. I do like the weird random text in this game, I just haven't been reading it lately. That's cool, I like the texture of this, this kind of white lumpy, lumpy gravy! Oh, that's a Frank Zappa album. This kind of white lumpy texture. It's, uh... Definitely cool how he's, he's using the clay texture to make a unique art style for his game. Although some things are pretty much just drawn, I, I would suppose. I don't know. Maybe they're drawn and like shaded in order to look like clay. Bongorm is still dead. Who cares? Here's a dancing fool. He's just dancing back and forth. He looks weird. He looks like a Ken doll or something. Uh, hello? So here's the spaceship. And then it's like, oh boy. The spaceship requires a key. And it's all like neon and flashing. Um, no? Okay. So what are we going to do now? What exactly uh, befalls us to become... Oh, what a terrible fate has become to me, bestowed to me. There's a squid. That's one of my favorite, <laughs> favorite lines from that cartoon. It's just so stupid. Oh no, what a terrible fate has become to me. <laughs> it's just strong bad using big words in a non-functional way is so funny. Especially in the older cartoons where he had a thicker Mexican accent. I mean, I, I like the later cartoons because, you know, they're not... They're sort of funnier because they're not implying any race or anything like that. And I think that kind of detracts from the humor to have, like, a character that's, like, a specific race. Um... I mean, if it's something like Homestar Runner, where the, it's, like, not about that kind of thing. But, oh, that kind of thing. Well, oh, does every character have to be, like... If it's a Mexican character, do they have to be, like, oh, I'm Mexican, like, the whole time? Like, that's their only character trait? No, that's not what I'm saying. But I don't exactly know what I'm saying, so... <sighs> 29 vegetables. Oh, is this when I was kind of trying to grind for money? Which is kind of pointless, because I don't need to. So, anyway. Let's talk about G.K. Chesterton. Um, I haven't actually read anything by G.K. Chesterton. Uh, let's see. G.K. Chest Gilbert Keith Chesterton. K.C.S.G. Born May 29th, 1874 died June 14th, 1936, was an English writer, philosopher, lay theologian, and literary and art critic. Now, lay theologian, I think, means that he doesn't mean like an amateur theologian, like he didn't have an official degree. Oh, inf influence Slava Zizek, really? See, I know Zizek because he's that, like, Slovenian dude who's like, yes, hello, I hate life, hello. And, like, he's kind of funny. He's very funny. <laughs> Humanity is okay, but 99% of people are boring idiots. See, like, a guy like that is my hero. Um, but I'm surprised that he is influenced by G.K. Chesterton. Um, 
I thought, didn't he, didn't G.K. Chesterton influence C.S. Lewis? Huh. I don't know, maybe, maybe not. Let's see. Oh, he was a Tory, that's fun. Okay, Chesterton's The Everlasting Man contributed to C.S. Lewis's conversion to Christianity. Lewis called the book the best popular apologetic I know, and to Rhonda Bodle he wrote, the very best popular defense of the full Christian position I know is G.K. Chesterton's The Everlasting Man. It was cited in a list of ten books that most shaped his vocational attitude and philosophy of life. Okay, well, I'll have to check that out then, because I love C.S. Lewis, and I'm interested to see what shaped him. We're really fighting these cone cultists from the very first area because I was like, oh, let me go back to the first area and grind for money off of these really easy eddy, uh, enemies who give petty experience. I mean, at least I'll get some meat from them, which we can turn into health and all that. Um, I guess at this point, if we're going up against the final boss and we need all the health that we can get, it's good to go back to previous areas and fight fight any enemies that we skipped over. But, um, I don't know. I don't know what the point of, like, going back to an old battle is. If they, if they give you, like, you know, 50 bucks, whoop de do. Somnosa becomes blind. Uh-oh. Wayne still can't see a darn thing. Oh, poor Crescent Moon protagonist. What shall become to thee? What shall become to thee? What terrible fate shall befall thee? Will, will your Netflix subscription end before you can watch the final episode of Twin Peaks uh, Season 2? Because that happened to me. It wasn't even a, my Netflix subscription, it was my friend's. And like, that only happens after you stop paying for it for like a month. But like, the friend didn't even think to like warn me in advance. They were like, hey, it could have sent me a text being like, hey, we stopped paying for it, just a heads up. But no. So anyway. Um, I love this. This background is kind of like a melted wax on a starry sky. That's kind of nice. 150 bucks found. With that money, we can buy... Uh, what can you buy with 150 bucks? You can buy a few sweaters. You can buy... Um, tickets to Metallica. I don't know. <laughs> Metallica is very popular these days because the whole Stranger Things... The whole Stranger Thing things. Yes. These backgrounds are so, like... Okay, what is this background? This background is, like, that rug in, like, preschool classrooms with all the cars on it. Like, the little streets. You know what I'm talking about? I like the cone cultist. I, no, the cone statue, because, like, those little ribbons on his hat that sort of make him look like a medieval princess. The sort of stereotypical, not princess, but, like, medieval lass with, like, the big cone hat and the little ribbons. Wayne's crew was victorious. 225 bucks found. Frozen burrito found. Yes, keep wandering around the mountain. Okay, so here's Space Shuriken, so now at least the four of us can do Space Shurikens, which is like, you know, one of the best sort of attacks in the game. Um, still not sure how to, like, sort of utilize the four characters as, as classes. I know, like, Data Smolen has, like, the most MP, uh, and Sun Snosa probably has, like, the best attack. But I'm not really sure, like, how to utilize... Oh, this one looks like a Jackson Pollock painting, sort of, almost. I'm not sure how to... Oh, is that Pongorma's head? 
just as one of the th th thingies. Yes, after a long day hiking the mystical mountain, we must take a nap. Mount Dedalunian. <laughs> I was gonna say Dedalunian, but it had like an extra L in it, so I was, I was nervous on the details of pronouncing it right. Yes. Tiyipalulian. Forbidden seasons will render our furnace something something. So walk by a couple of fish skeletons, and uh, anyway, I think we're getting about ready to end the episode soon. Ahead lies Mount Shugtenny. Impede my stone. Well, not if your stone is a rolling stone. Ooh. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this uh, very uneventful, or sort of eventful, depending on how you look at it, episode of Hylix. And I hope to see you in the future for more shenanigans. Goodbye.